Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. So just as one spoiler season finally ended with, you know, Kamigawa and Neon Dynasty, finally coming to a close and being released as a set. Um, now we have what seems to be another, well, let's just say mini spoiler season of sorts, because the Street Fighter Secret Lair seems to have, well, maybe been potentially spoiled a bit earlier than intended. And, well, we got some really exciting cards from this Secret Lair, including Chun-Li. And if you haven't seen my episode from this morning on Chun-Li, Countless Kicks, make sure you check that one out at some point. But also in that potential spoiler image, we also got Blanca, Ferocious Friend. And yeah, Blanca being a very cool character is also a very cool card. But again, a disclaimer that these have not been officially confirmed to be the actual cards. And if you want to see kind of the image and the explanation behind all of it, make sure you check out that previous episode at some point on Chun-Li because it's included in there, but I'm not going to include it in every single one of these episodes. Anyways... Also, a huge thank you to Eddie for all the great discussions on basically every spoiler season, including, well, this mini one of sorts, and yeah, great discussions around this card as well. But if I make any mistakes on this episode or any other episode, make sure you always blame Eddie, because it's always Eddie's fault and not mine. So now with all that said, let's jump into it. And really quick, because the actual image of the card was incredibly small, well, a big thank you to MTG.Design for existing and helping me create custom cards. That being said, this is the actual text on the card. Okay, though, I'm, I'm just realizing right now, and my apologies, rolling attack and electric thunder should be italicized. My bad. So Blanca is a 5-5 human beast warrior with haste that costs three red-green. It has rolling attack. Blanca has trample as long as you've cast three or more spells this turn. And also, Electric Thunder, whenever Blanca becomes the target of a spell, he gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn and deals 2 damage to each opponent. I absolutely love the design of this card, and yeah, you can build a really spicy commander deck around this one. It's kind of like a spell-slinging, perforose-targeting kind of build. Whereas Perforos is going to focus on getting creatures into play, most likely creature tokens, Blanca is like, no, 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 just focus on me. Just target me with a ton of spells. I'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. Gain trample once you cast three spells, and I'll start pinging opponents for a ton of damage. So you can smash some face with Blanca by making it gigantic, while also well, burning face? Is that what we say? I don't know. Burning uh, players and opponents by just, again, targeting Blanca to ping all your opponents for two per each target. And keep in mind, this says whenever Blanca becomes the target of a spell, it does not say, you know, a spell that you cast or that you control. It's any spell. So if your opponents try to target Blanca, it's also going to punish them and your other opponents as well. So yeah, this can be an aggressive damage-based commander that can be somewhat Voltron-y and spell-slingy, and yeah, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with it. I think there's a ton of flavor to it and a lot of potential with it as well, and yeah, just overall, like I've said before, just a really cool design and a really cool card. That being said, I do want to encourage people, even if you are really excited about this card, do not feel pressured to buy, you know, the actual secret layer. If, you know, let's just say that you only want this one, you know, the actual magic versions of these cards are coming out. I believe they say, what, six months after kind of this, essentially. And I'm sure there are players out there that actually won't even want to wait, you know, that long because, you know, to either get the secret layer or the actual magic card is going to take quite a bit of time and might be really excited to just build around this right away so i'm sure there's gonna be players out there that just proxy it which you know if that's cool with your play group awesome commander is a social format so just talk regardless if you do want to build a deck around blanco what kinds of cards should you be considering well the first card that actually came to mind when i saw blanco was most definitely live wire lash it's an equipment that costs two and it costs two to equip and it says equip creature gets plus two plus zero and has whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell this creature deals two damage to target creature or player 
So Blanc actually just really reminded me of the design of this card, and it actually works very well in tandem with Blanca. Just suit Blanca up with this, and now every single time that you target Blanca, or actually anyone targets Blanca, you're going to get two triggers off of it. Again, obviously you get Blanca's trigger to get plus two, plus two, and you know, ping all opponents for two, which is fantastic. And on top of that now, obviously Blanca's gonna get plus two, plus zero, you know, that doesn't stack with, you know, the same way that the plus two, plus two does, but still it's a nice little addition. And of course, obviously now every single time you are targeting, you are also getting to dish out two damage to any target, you know, that's a creature or a player. So yeah, if you want to dish out an extra two damage to a player's face, every single time you're casting a spell, you're dishing out with four damage to at least one player, or you can start taking out creatures. I mean, there's a lot of potential by adding this card in and getting it equipped to Blanca. Of course, some other cards that can really come in handy are low to the ground cantrip spells that actually target Blanca, like Expedite, Viridus and Whips, and Ancestral Anger. Expedite's gonna give Tar Creature haste until end of turn, and it's gonna have you draw a card. Now Blanca already has haste, so you know that's not really gonna help it there, but that really doesn't matter all that much. Again, the fact that this is just a low to the ground cantrip that, you know, can target is going to be, you know, fantastic for this deck, even though it's not really adding any additional value outside of, again, just being a way to target and replace itself. I mean, essentially just, you know, read on this card, hey, plus two, plus two to Blanca, dish out two damage each opponent and draw a card all for one man instant speed. Yeah, that's a good card. And of course, there are other low to the ground cantrips like Viridus and Wisp that actually give you an additional benefit. You know, like it gives target creature, you know, becomes green and gets plus one plus zero until end of turn, becoming green, not a big deal at all, really, or it doesn't really affect at all, but that plus one plus zero is a nice additional benefit. Speaking of which, Ancestral Anger says, target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is one plus the number of cards named Ancestral Anger in your graveyard, draw a card. Obviously, in a format like Commander that is a singleton format, you can only have one of these in your deck, so this is still just plus one plus zero, but still, this also gives Trample notably, so you don't even have to get to that three spell requirement with Blanca to actually get it Trample. At the end of the day though, yeah, definitely consider a lot of these low to the ground cantrip spells. And a huge thank you to Eddie for pointing out some of these cards, like, you know, Season of Growth, which is incredible with Blanca. It says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one, which is nice, but the important part is, whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you control, draw a card. So this turns every single one of your targeting spells into a cantrip, which is incredible with this commander. In fact, out of every card in this deck, this very well might be the Golden Pig, because, yeah, this can help keep your hand full, which is incredibly important. I mean, and even just think about, you know, those previous cantrip spells we just talked about, now those are one mana, you know, draw two cards, dish out two damage each opponent, and plus two plus two to your commander, on top of whatever else they might do. Another one that Eddie pointed out, though, was Krark the Thumbless, which is also fantastic with this commander. It says, whenever you cast an insert sorcery spell, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, return that spell to its owner's hand. If you win the flip, copy that spell, and you may choose some targets for the copy. Whichever way that coin flip goes, you're going to benefit. If you lose the flip, great, that spell goes back to your hand. You know, it might not, you know, get the exact effect of the spell, again, like a Beardus and Wisps. Cool, you don't get to draw that card, you don't get to get plus one plus zero, but you do get that trigger still from your commander to dish out two damage, and you'll get plus two plus two. On top of getting that spell back in your hand so that you can then do it again. And if you end up winning the flip, great, we copy the spell and double up the effect. So yeah, obviously, Krar can be huge in this deck as well. And speaking of huge, well, Wild Defiance is incredible in this deck, an enchantment for two and a green that says, whenever a creature you control becomes the target of an instant or sorcery spell, that creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. So again, this does not care whose instant or sorcery spell it is. It could be yours or your opponent's. If you are targeting, if anyone is targeting your commander with an instant or sorcery, it's basically going to be getting plus five, plus five for each spell. Yeah, with this in play and enough spells, you can easily take your opponents out in one shot. Again, thank you to that trample. And if not, you know, you can still get through a ton of damage and just keep burning them down, you know, with more and more spells. Of course, you're going to want to also have some low to the ground protection spells to protect your commander, you know, in combat or, you know, from, you know, your opponents actually trying to get rid of it with things like withstand death, blossoming defense and Tamiyo safekeeping. Withstand Death is a very simple card. It's an instant for a green that says target creature gains indestructible this turn. So again, protecting your commander, again, also pumping it and pinging your opponents all for one mana. Yeah, sign me up for that. Speaking of which, Blossoming Defense says target creature gets plus two, plus two and gains Hexproof until end of turn, which, yeah, that's just a nice additional boost to get another plus two, plus two. And Hexproof can kind of act as a counterspell in some ways. 
Again, say an opponent tries to target your commander with a sword to plowshares, well, you are going to get that trigger, so they're paying for that already, getting plus two, plus two for your commander, and pinging everyone for two, and then you just cast this for one mana to pump your commander further and make it so their spell basically does nothing. And of course, Tamiyo Safekeeping is now a fantastic version of these cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. It's an instant for a green, it says target permanent you control gains hexproof and indestructible until on a turn you gain two life. So this can protect anything, you know, especially your commander, giving it hexproof and indestructible so it's protected, you know, from a lot of things and also just two life. Why not? So yeah, a fantastic new card that I'm sure a lot of decks out there, including this one, are going to want to take a look at. Other cards to take a look at are to make your commander hit even harder with things like Assault Strobe, Teamer Battle Rage, and Unleash Fury. Assault Strobe is a very simple low to the ground card that says target creature gains double strike until end of turn. So even just casting this single spell on your commander is like, hey, okay, my commander is a 5-5, but now a 7-7 because again, it's targeting it, and then it has double strike. So your commander is hitting for 14 with a single mana spell. Now, of course, again, more and more spells that you cast, the more and more damage you're dishing out, and this basically helps double up that damage that you're doing. And of course, Teamer Battle Rage is, you know, one mana more. It's going to give Tar Creature double strike until end of turn, but also because, you know, you meet that ferocious requirement with your commander, it's also going to gain trample until end of turn. So even if you don't get to that three spell requirement, this can help give that trample to get that damage through. And outside of doubling up damage with double strike, you can also just double up damage with, well, cards like Unleash Fury that double up power. It says double the power of target creature until end of turn, so yeah, I mean, just double it up at the right moment, and you can probably get to a one-shot kill out of nowhere pretty easily. So yeah, getting double the value essentially out of all the spells that you're casting, you know, when it comes to actually dishing out combat damage, can be huge. And speaking of doubling things up, let's talk about Seize the Day, a fantastic card with this commander. It's a sorcery for three and a red, but it's got a flashback cost of two and a red, and it says untap target creature after this main phase, there's no combat phase, while additional main phase. Basically, you get an extra combat. And an extra combat can be incredibly deadly with this extra combat targeting spell. So yeah, target your commander with this, pump it, dish out some damage, get an extra combat, swing again, and yeah, I mean, obviously, the more and more spells that you've cast this turn to make your commander hit harder, this lets you hit, again, that either that same player or a different player just as hard again. So yeah, this can easily turn, you know, your commander into a Voltron one-shot kill on one opponent to a Voltron one-shot kill on two opponents in the same turn, or maybe even three if you can flash it back, which would be a very, very spicy play. But speaking of spice, we have gotten to talk about some cards like Gratuitous Violence, Fire Emancipation, and Gutter Snipe. Gratuitous Violence is an enchantment that says if a creature you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. Yeah, doubling up all of the damage, not just combat damage, all of the damage that Blanca is going to be putting out is absurd. Again, when you just target your commander with any spell or anyone targets your commander with any spell, that's going to be four damage to each opponent, 12 damage in total from one spell. On top of that, again, yes, your commander is getting plus two, plus two, but it's basically plus four, plus four, because again, yeah, your damage is doubled in combat too. And of course, there's a more expensive version of this card that is one mana more and quite a bit money-wise more <laughs> is in Fire Emancipation. It says if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. This is absolutely crazy with Blanca. One spell that targets Blanca equals six damage to all opponents, 18 damage in total. On top of that, again, that's plus two, plus two, which, uh, okay, that's, I mean, basically plus six, plus six. And essentially, at the end of the day, again, Blanca is, what, a 7-7 seven, seven with just that? And if it hits a player, that's times 3 damage, which is, what, 21 damage. That is a one-shot KO from just one spell. So, yeah, if your opponents can somehow survive, you know, you casting a, you know, spell after spell after spell targeting it, they're probably not going to survive in combat. And, of course, you can also take advantage, you know, in other ways with all those spells that you're going to be casting with something like Gutter Snipe, which says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Gutter Snipe deals two damage to each opponent. And, obviously, that plays very well with each of these, you know, Gratuitous Violence and Fire Emancipation, all those damage doublers and, you know, the damage tripler. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can take more and more advantage of all those spells you're going to be casting. And, of course, I have got to mention, you know, with you dishing out all that damage with your commander, Graph the Dexoskeleton. It's going to give Equipped Creature plus two, plus two, but the more important thing is it's going to give the Equipped Creature Infect. So with this attached to Blanca, essentially all you need to do, again, not including damage doublers or damage triplers, is cast five spells in total that target Blanca, or, you know, your opponents can help out too if they really want to, and that's going to be five pings of two Infect damage to every opponent, which again is ten Infect for each opponent, or should I say ten Poison Counters, and your opponents lose. 
Yeah, Infect and Blanca can definitely be an effective and very deadly combination. Now, other kinds of cards that definitely came to mind that you might want to consider are cards like Bergy, God of Storytelling, and Storm Kiln Artist. Bergy has, whenever you cast a spell, add red. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. And something about boasts, but that doesn't matter, so ignore that. Regardless, that first part is absolutely incredible, and yeah, it can lead to you casting spell after spell after spell, especially with those low-to-the-ground spells. Because if you're casting a cantrip again like Expedite, you know, that replaces itself by drawing a card to just cost a single red mana, and now you get that mana back. And then Stormkill and Artist works in a somewhat similar way. It has Magecraft whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. Again, the vast majority of targeting spells that you're probably going to be casting are, again, instants and sorceries, so yeah. I mean, just get an extra treasure every single time you cast one of them to either, you know, get exactly the mana back that you paid into it, or, you know, part of it, to help you cast more and more spells in a single turn. Yeah, once you're set up, you can do some really explosive things with a commander like this. And speaking of explosive, and I'm pretty sure that this works, um, definitely consider storm cards like Grape Shot and, you know, another one that came to mind with Ground Rift. Grape Shot is a sorcery that costs one in red and it says it deals one damage to any target, and it has storm. So when you cast a spell you copied for each spell cast before this turn, you may choose the targets for the copies. Again, with this commander, you are heavily incentivized to cast a ton of spells in a turn, so yeah, your storm count can be built to absurd levels. Then you cast this, and of course, you know, even though it might hurt your commander just a little bit, it really doesn't, you actually target your commander with all of your Grape Shot copies. So your commander is being targeted with obviously original Grape Shot and all the copies, and you essentially are getting that trigger on your commander for every single one of them. Now, yes, you're going to be pinging your commander for one each time, but that's no big deal because your commander is still getting plus two, plus two for each of those copies. You know, on top of pinging your opponents for two damage each. So yeah, Grape Shot, well worth it. And yeah, Ground Rift is even better. To be honest, I didn't remember that this card exists, but I'm very glad it does now for this commander. It's a sorcery for a red that says target creature without flying can't block this turn and storm. So it costs one mana less than Grape Shot. It obviously doesn't deal any damage to your commander. Your commander obviously doesn't have flying so you can actually target it. And you just target it with all these copies. Now, unfortunately, oh no, my commander can't block this turn. Doesn't matter, it's obviously during your turn, and yeah, this can be a great finisher to just say, hey, I've cast all these other spells this turn, now let me just basically kind of like double up on all of these triggers and get, you know, a, a ton of power and toughness to my commander into paying a ton of damage to all my opponents for one mana. So yeah, again, storm cards like these that can actually target your commander can definitely be great cards to consider for this kind of a build. And one final card that Eddie pointed out that I want to bring up is Chandra's Ignition. This can be a fantastic finisher. It's a sorcery for three red red and says target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. So yeah, get Blanca's power up quite a bit, you know, by pumping it more and more and more. Then, you know, you just utilize this to dish out an absurd amount of damage to all of your opponents and all their creatures. You can basically wipe out every creature on the board and probably your opponents while you're at it too. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Blanca Ferocious Friend. Yeah, this is a really cool design for a card in a commander, and there's a really cool kind of, again, spell slingy, even slash Voltron-y, uh, maybe stormy kind of a deck out there. You can have some really explosive plays with this commander, and you can take advantage of, well, a lot of cards out there that maybe don't see a lot of play in other kinds of decks. And obviously, if your opponents do try to stop you and try to target, you know, Blanca, they're going to pay for it. And actually, your opponents, the other opponents are going to pay for it too. So make sure you've got those protection spells as well. Like, you know, that brand new Tameo Safekeeping, which is fantastic. Again, just a, a really fun play being like, oh, okay, you're going to try to sort the plowshares, my commander. Cool. Uh, you all get pinged. Uh, it gets bigger. And then I'm just going to save my commander anyways, and then get it bigger. And then also ping you all again. Definitely can lead to a lot of fun plays, and yeah, I think a lot of players out there are going to be pretty excited about this design. Again, that being said, disclaimer, this has not been officially confirmed, but again, 99.999% sure that it is the actual card. And again, on top of that, I want to urge players, do not feel pressured to buy a secret lair. Even if you like this card or some of the other cards, do not feel pressured. Again, the actual magic versions of these are going to be coming out at some point. And again, if you can't wait that long, I am guessing that there are going to be players out there that maybe don't want to wait that long, you know, for this to come out in one way or the other, and might just ask their player if it's okay for them to actually just make a proxy of this card. So then they can build a deck around it right away. Again, Commander is a social format, so just talk.
And of course, I am trying my best to highlight these commanders as well as I can and as quickly as I can, so be on the lookout for more potential episodes on these potential spoilers. And yeah, I'm probably going to go get a cup of coffee real quick before I do that. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. Thank you.